If you follow this channel, then you know we've been following China Eastern Airlines Flight 5735, probably closer than any other channel on YouTube. And it's no secret that many have been leaning toward the accident being intentional at the hands of one of the pilots. And judging from the comments, most of you feel the same way. However, I do get many comments suggesting that I should wait until the facts are in, and that's good advice. Because we have no clue as to what actually happened on that flight. But usually in the wake of accidents like this, over the course of time, after the flight voice and data recorders have been analyzed, eventually investigators are able to piece together what caused the accident. However, in this case, there's a real possibility that we may never find out the truth. But it won't be because the black boxes were too damaged. No, in this case, it's going to boil down to the thing it usually boils down to. Politics. That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. I hope you're all doing well, wherever you may be all around this great big world of ours. So I'm pretty sure this will be my last video on this subject, at least until or if they ever do determine a cause of what actually brought down Flight 5735. But I came across an article by John Hemmerdinger with Flight Global that I thought you'd really be interested in. But also this article got me thinking about why we may never actually know what really happened. So we'll hit some of the highlights and then I'll come back around and tell you why I think we may never find out the truth of what caused the downing of Flight 5735. So as we all know, there have been very few details revealed about the crash as aviation experts continue to caution against drawing conclusions. But most aviation experts agree that there are basically only two possible causes. 1. A catastrophic flight control problem, or 2. A pilot putting the plane into an intentional dive. John Goglia, a safety consultant and former NTSB member, said, That kind of vertical dive without a radio call of any kind from the flight crew could clearly indicate a human activity to make that happen. But Goglia added that aviation experts from all around the world have tried to come up with a mechanical failure model that would make the plane act that way. And so far, none have come up with a similar result. Even China's first official report on the accident 30 days out still reveals little clues to dispel the human factor theory. But Flight Global interviewed former military and airline captain and now aviation consultant John Cox, who said it is entirely possible that it was deliberately done. Cox said I can't discount that possibility. But Cox, who spent many hours as a captain of the 737, among other aircraft, said some unusual type of mechanical issue or perhaps inaccurate flight data could also be the cause. Could it have been an autopilot-induced trim runaway? Theoretically, he said I can make that case. But this airplane doesn't have a history of doing anything like that, he said. It was on March 21st, China Eastern Airlines Flight 5735 was cruising at 29,100 feet, when suddenly and without warning it began to dive at more than 30,000 feet per minute. John Goglia said it simply nosed over and it came down damn near vertically. He said airliners just don't come straight down, unless someone in the cockpit commands the aircraft to do so. And even then, that person must keep pressure on the controls or the jet will start leveling off on its own. In other words, he said you have to make the airplane go straight down. And Goglia added an explosion or rapid decompression would likely have caused the plane to break apart and that just didn't happen in this case. But the data we have so far does suggest an extreme rate of descent and safety experts say only a handful of other accidents involving comparable descent rates were the result of deliberate pilot action. One of which includes the October 1999 accident of Egypt Air Flight 990, a 767-300ER that plummeted at a descent rate reaching 39,000 feet per minute. That aircraft also recovered briefly before finally impacting the Atlantic Ocean. Even though Egypt disputed the findings, the NTSB concluded that the first officer caused that disaster by pushing the jet into a dive and cutting off its engines. Cockpit voice recordings also indicated that there was a struggle in the cockpit. And the NTSB also attributed the rapid descent and crash of a Silk Air 737 in December of 1997 to intentional pilot action, specifically sustained manual nose-down flight control inputs. That aircraft came down in Sumatra at a rate that neared 39,000 feet per minute. But Indonesian investigators say they found insufficient evidence to determine that cause. 
Goglia says the China Eastern accident appears amazingly similar to the Egypt and Silk Air crashes. But Cox recalls an Atom Air 737-400 in January of 2007, which dived from 35,000 feet at a descent rate of 53,760 feet per minute. In that case, they concluded the jet's pilots were preoccupied with troubleshooting an inertial reference system problem, responded improperly after the autopilot disengaged. The jet banked steeply and the pilots were unable to recover. However, Goglia said the China Eastern pilots made no contact with air traffic control. There should have been some sort of call, he says. But Cox cautions that emergencies do not always afford pilots time to issue mayday calls or to otherwise notify controllers of trouble. Talking to the ATC is about third on the list, he says. If I have a major flight control problem, I'm going to deal with that first. However, Cox noted that China has since returned all grounded 737-800s to service, which is evidence that China believes the aircraft is safe to operate. But we also know that China enlisted the US FAA and NTSB to help decipher the heavily damaged black boxes. But so far the FAA has declined to comment about its role in the investigation, deferring instead to the NTSB which is the US agency responsible for the investigation in the US. But both the NTSB and Boeing declined to comment, deferring to China's aviation authority, the CAAC. They cited the International Civil Aviation Organization guidelines that assign the country in which the accident occurred with the responsibility for releasing the information. But pay attention to that last sentence, because the country of origin that is responsible for releasing information on the investigation in this case is, of course, China. And that brings us to why I think we may never learn the truth about Flight 5735. First, a little history refresher. For all of the 20th century and some of this century, the West and the US in particular, whether it was against the Russians or China, North Korea or any number of other evil empires of the day, take your pick. The West always took a hard line against communist dictatorships, whether it was the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 60s or the ending of the Cold War in the 80s, the line was always clear. There was good and evil. The West were the good guys, and the dictators, of course, were the bad guys. But that was when the Western world was still manufacturing self-reliant, when it came to everything from electronics to cars to sneakers. But over time, as Western countries started producing more and more products in China, because it kept their costs low and their profits high, suddenly the balance of power began to shift. Now, I'm not talking about military power, but there is that aspect too. But I'm talking about the power of an endless supply of cheap labor and high profits for Western consumers and corporations to the point now that Western governments no longer have the upper hand when it comes to dealing with China for fear that they will simply turn off the tap and stop the endless cheap supply of Nikes, big screen TVs, and iPhones. But hey, don't take my word for it, because concluding his article on Flight Global, John Hemmerdinger and pretty much everyone else in the Western world is also aware of this global power shift. Hemmerdinger writes, The U.S. is cautious against acting in any way that might push China closer to Russia or encourage Chinese support for Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. More broadly, Hemmerdinger says China and the U.S. have for several years been fighting a trade war and battling over industrial intellectual property, the fallout from which has already landed on Boeing 737 MAX. China waited a year after the FAA cleared the MAX before issuing its own order lifting the grounding in December of 2021. Yet still no Chinese airlines have restarted MAX flights. And finally, he is spot on when to close out the article he says reluctance to comment is typical during crash investigations. But observers say U.S. officials are handling all China affairs with particular delicacy due to recent global events. Okay, so with that in mind, it's not a stretch to assume that if the U.S. and the West did find evidence that the accident was caused by a disgruntled pilot but international rules state that China is the only one that can talk about it. Well then, like I said, that's why we may never really know the truth. But it wouldn't be the first time politics got in the way of the truth. And it certainly won't be the last. So how about you? What do you think? Let me know down below. Well, that's going to wrap it up for now. Oh, and a quick shout out to James A. Elliott, 
Thanks for the coffee. As always, if you want to help support the channel, the links are in the description. And on the way out, please don't forget to subscribe if you think I've earned it. Also remember to like, share, and ring the bell. And as always, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.